Hello there everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for a new tutorial. And today's project features the just released September 2021 exclusive with Simon Says Stamp and Tim Holtz. This is a much awaited Stamptember collaboration set and for good reason because it is a beautiful classic Christmas set and it is a good one to create with. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this slimline card, which actually has an overlay. It's got a snow overlay that will then reveal the art of Santa with his reindeer flying away into the night sky. It's a really unique card design that allows you to showcase your art, keep the sentiment on your card, but the art then is standalone. So it allows you to not have to worry about covering up any of your art with your greeting. I really like this feature and I think it's a really good way to be able to turn your art into a card. Okay, so first we have the Stamptember exclusive stamp set. This is the Stamptember 2021 exclusive with Tim Holtz. It also comes with a moon mask, which I am absolutely loving. So it's a two piece masking stencil that will allow you to create a really beautiful moon in your sky. We're gonna start creating by working with some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I've cut this down to be slightly smaller than a slimline card, and I've put a piece of tape on the back side of my plain moon, and I'm putting it into the corner where the moon is going to end up being in my scene. I'm pulling out a star stencil from Simon Says Stamp and some texture paste from Tim Holtz. Using a palette knife, I'm going to start smearing some of that paste through the stencil in random sections to create a starry background. Now, however, I'm not going to end up covering the entire background with this star stencil. I just want these stars scattered around. So as I lift this off, you can see not every portion of this scene is covered with those stars. So I'll reposition that stencil in another section of my slimline card panel and I'll apply more paste through the stencil to finish off the stars. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside to dry. This is gonna take a little bit for the paste to fully dry, but while it's drying, we're gonna work on creating the overlay for our slimline card. I'm gonna remove that mask here before I go any further because I do need to clean all these off so that way none of the paste dries on my stencil. Now we have that nice negative space for the moon. I've pulled out a laminating sheet here and I'm going to start filling it with some mica flakes. I love laminating glitter. It's something I've done many times in the past and it's always been a popular technique for you guys. So I wanted to show you again how to do this for those of you that may have missed my previous videos. If you take your glitter or mica flakes or whatever you wanna stick inside the laminating sheets, fill the inside of the sheet with your embellishment, put a piece of cardstock in the fold of the laminating sheet so that way it makes it easier to go through the laminator. You need something stiff in there to help the laminating sheet go through. Then carefully suspend the sheet off of your desk so that way it has an easier time keeping everything nice and straight and it's not gonna curl as it runs through your laminator. You may notice some clicking and popping as this sheet transfers through the laminator, but that's okay. It's just the glitter getting pressed into the laminating sheet. So once this has gone through, I'm gonna set it aside to cool and we're gonna work with our background again. I've pulled out the tree image from the Stamptember 2021 Tim Holtz exclusive and I'm gonna start inking that up with some distress inks. I'm using Lucky Clover and Pine Needles and I'm stamping this tree cluster down along the bottom portion of my card. I'm going to stamp this multiple times because I want a variation of colors in these trees and I want some really nice dark areas. So by overlapping the colors a few times, I'm going to get the look that I'm going for. Once I've stamped the trees, I'll move on to ink smushing the background. I have a piece of plastic here that I'm going to use as my carrier sheet for the inks and this will allow me to maintain control of the smushing as I add the ink down onto my card. A lot of people like to do ink smushing directly on their desk and pick up the ink with their paper, but I like doing it this way. I feel like I get a lot more control and I like that. So I'm going to ink smush some color here onto my background, which isn't moving a whole lot because we do have that texture paste impacting how the ink is moving, but that's okay. We're gonna pull out our distress sprayer and start moving that color with a bit of water. 
I haven't dried anything yet. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of color, this time with Chip Sapphire. So the first color was Salvage Patina. Now I've got Chip Sapphire and I'm smooshing that wet ink into the wet ink that's already on my paper. I'm gonna smear this around to get the colors moving. I'm kind of going for a little bit of a wispy transition here, almost like the uh, Northern Lights. It's kind of the look I was going for. This is where I'm drying it and I'm making sure I dry completely before I start ink blending. I've pulled out those same two colors, Chip Sapphire and Salvage Patina, and I'm using Simon Says Stamp blending brushes and also the Simon Positively Everything tool to allow me to ink blend the two colors onto my background, trying to keep both colors in the same general area as where we've already done the smushing. So the smushing is providing a nice bit of texture in the background, and because distress inks are translucent, it's allowing me to have the ink blending that I'm putting on top show through the ink smushing. So it's creating a really nice variation in my background here. Once I have all of the ink blending complete, I did bring out my distress sprayer again and I'm flicking on some water droplets. This is going to dry and create some really nice water splatters which will create the look of texture in the background. I love this look and I think it really makes the stars come to life. So I'll dry this really, really well. And unfortunately, I did not have the camera running as I did this. I used some glitter gel and I just put that through the moon crater portion of the stencil mask that comes with the Stamp Timber exclusive. So you can see that glittery finish on the moon area. I also used some Tim Holtz Snowfall Grit Paste and used that to add just a little bit of snow effects here and there on my trees. This will dry with a really nice gritty texture, almost as if it is really snow. It has a really nice hard grit finish that feels like some frosty snow. It's really cool. So here's how that grit paste looks applied down onto the trees. I'm going to now work on creating a background that I can do some stamping on. We need to add Santa and the reindeer to this scene but I want this to blend in with the background that the Santa is going to be sitting on top of. So using those same two colors of Distress Inks, Salvage Patina and Chip Sapphire, I'm going to ink smush another background so that I can stamp on top of it. So I'm going to try to mimic the same look and feel as the background that we've been working on this whole time. So that way this doesn't have too much of a difference between this piece and the background. And you'll see what I mean in a minute here. Last finishing touch was to add just a few extra dots of ink for some intense color. And of course, I can't go without adding a little bit of water splatter too. I'll dry these water splatters to really get them to show up on my background. This is a technique that I use often to really intensify those water splatters. All right, so we're gonna stick it inside my Misty tool here so that I can start stamping. I am aligning this up in the exact position that I want. This is the Santa sleigh image from the Stamp Temper 2021 exclusive from Simon Says Stamp and Tim Holtz. I'm using multiple colors of Distress Inks, Aged Mahogany and Festive Berries, then Vintage Photo and Ground Espresso. So I'm inking up this stamp in strategic areas. This is not going to be precise. There is going to be some red transitioning over to the reindeer and then some brown transitioning over to the Santa image. And I'm not looking for it to be 100% precise. I just want some color down on here. I stamped it, then also opened the Misty back up and spritzed the image and stamped it a second time to kind of get those colors to blend a little bit more. I let that dry for a minute and then I pulled out some intense black ink. Now I haven't moved the stamp or the image or anything. Everything's still in the same position. I'm using that intense black ink to add some really intense black color to certain areas of the stamped image. And I'm stamping that down to create the look of shadows. Once this dried, I pulled out my fine tip scissors and I fussy cut the image out. When I lay this over top of the background, you're gonna see how this blends in really beautifully with the background. And it almost looks like as if the image was stamped onto the background instead of actually being stamped on a separate piece and then cut out. Before I add the image down onto my card though, I did want to add a little bit more color to certain areas of this image. So I stamped some of the Distress Ink onto my stamping board here and I'm going to start using a little bit of water to blend that out and because Distress Inks are more translucent, 
I love how we get some of that blue to show through the areas where I'm adding some of this red. It creates a really cool look and has a very shadowy finish. In addition to the red, I also pulled out some of that vintage photo and I'm going to color in certain sections of the reindeer. This will fill in some of those areas and also, again, that transparent effect is going to really show through that brown nicely. I pulled out some fine tech watercolors and I'm going to use those to color in the rails of the sleigh. I wanted these to be metallic because in my head I think that's how Santa's sleigh should look. So I'm going to go ahead and add that gold down there and I put a little bit of glue on Santa's fur of his coat and also onto the fluffy ball on the end of his hat and I'm going to cover those with clear rock candy distress glitter. It's a very small detail, but I do think it makes a good impact on the card. I'm using a white gel pen to add some highlights to the sleigh, just in certain areas. I also added it onto some of the backsides of the reindeer and also the bars of the sleigh. The last thing I realized was I forgot to color in the sack that's in the back of Santa's sleigh. I pulled out some of the pine needles and Lucky Clover inks and I stamped those onto my board so that I could color in that bag to match up with the trees at the bottom. All right, so with any of my cards, almost always I'm adding splatters, right? Well, I pulled out some of Tim Holtz's Distress Mica stains here, and I'm using the blue color to add some mica speckles on my background. This will look really pretty when it catches the light. Then in addition to that, I also pulled out some picket fence, and I'm adding a little bit of that picket fence spray stain in certain areas of my card. And then one more time, I'm gonna add another color, Prize Ribbon. This is a gorgeous blue. I love this color. It's one of Tim's newer Distress Ink colors, and this spray stain looks amazing on top of this background. So I splattered those all on there, and I love the texture this provides. I'm going to attach the Santa sleigh image right underneath of the moon, and you'll see I'm planning on adding the sentiment right above the trees. But this is the part that I'm really excited about, is that this sentiment is going to be on the overlay that we're going to be creating here. And that's the snowfall piece that we laminated. That is going to allow me to have a place to put my sentiment. And I don't have to worry about covering up this gorgeous image. You'll notice I'm adding some embellishments. I used gold stars and also some of these beautiful gem stickers from Honeybee Stamps. These I attached onto the background. Here I have my snowfall overlay that we laminated. And I have a piece of patterned paper here. This 12 by 12 sheet is perfect size for creating slimline cards. I'm cutting this piece into about an inch wide and then I'm gonna score it a half of an inch so that I can fold this so it'll create a hinge for my overlay because my overlay is not permanently attached to the front of my card. It's a piece that you can open and close. So I need a hinge to be able to attach that overlay on top. So I used some Simon Says Stamp Redline Tape and I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to both sides of my hinge. I'll remove the backing and then carefully start by sticking my seam to the right hand side of the hinge. I'll butt that up against the fold, press it down really good. Then I'll take the overlay piece, lay it right on top of my seam and I'll fold the hinge on top of the overlay. So now what we've done is we've sandwiched that overlay inside of this hinge along with our background. I can now trim off all the excess. I used a bit of glitter paper here. This is some gold glitter paper and I cut a really thin border strip. My plan is to butt this up against the hinge for a little bit of extra embellishment. Plus I'm gonna have some gold in certain areas of this card. So I really wanna tie in that gold finish. After I've pressed that liquid glue and our little border strip into my card, I moved on to creating the sentiment. I'm using Simon Says Stamp ink here. This is embossing ink, and I'm gonna ink up one of the sentiments from the Stamp Timber exclusive stamp set. Stamp it down onto some Schoolhouse Red cardstock and use antique gold embossing powder to emboss the greeting. This is going to tie in, like I said, with the gold. I was looking for that gold strip to really tie in with all the other gold that I'm adding here onto my card. So my sentiment is gold embossed, and now I'm gonna pull in some twine. This is some May Arts twine that I have in my stash. I'm gonna tie this around my sentiment strip here and put a little bow on it. I'll trim down the sides of the sentiment strip just a little bit so it fits nicely on my card. This lines up perfectly in the middle of my overlay. 
So like I said, we have our sentiment on the overlay and then I can open it up and reveal that beautiful art on the inside. So this allows you to have your sentiment on your card, but your art is unimpacted from the greeting and it allows it to shine beautifully. I did cover up the back side of my sentiment just so it looks a little cleaner. I just put a piece of red cardstock on the back side there. My card is almost done. You can see how this overlay just looks amazing on top of here. But I wanted to tie in a little bit more gold to the background here. So on the overlay, not on the background, just on the overlay, I'm adding some gold stars that I die cut from a Simon Says Stamp Star die set. I cut these from the same gold glitter paper that I used for the gold strip that's butted up against my hinge. And that is the last final step that I used to create this amazing slimline card with the new Stamp Timber 2021 limited edition Stamp Timber exclusive with Tim Holtz. Simon Says Stamp and Tim Holtz have come up with this amazing stamp set. It is absolutely spectacular. It's one of, I think, the best yet of Tim Holtz and Stamp Timber collaboration sets. So don't forget, like any of the other Stamp Timber collaboration sets that I've showcased this year, these are limited edition and only available while supplies last. So if you love this set and you want to have it, you're definitely going to want to grab it while you can. My hope is that you enjoyed today's project using this Stamp Timber collaboration set. And whether you purchase the set or not, I hope that this card project has inspired you. Maybe you don't have this exclusive and you want to create a card that's very similar. I'm sure you can probably find some sets in your stash and use the techniques that I shared to create a very similar card. Either way, I hope you enjoyed and that you got some inspiration. I will be back very soon with more to share with everybody. But until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.